I wasn't willing to uh, do what was expected of me. Mm. Not talent wise, but in other areas. Mm -hmm. And were other girls doing? I was the only one that was in those types of positions. As Diddy's glass empire crumbles before his very eyes, another one of his victims comes forward with startling revelations. This time, it's none other than the American singer and member of the girl group Danity Kane, Aubrey O'Day. Aubrey revealed that Diddy made her life hell as he forced her to do unspeakable acts. In fact, she alleges that the music mobile pimped her out to Elise. What did Aubrey have to say regarding her time in Danity Kane? Did Diddy really do all that he's accused of? Before we get into the mess that is the life of P. Diddy, remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video. All right, let's get into it. When, when I first saw it, because there are so many people coming forward and there are so many stories and you're only seeing what you are seeing online, right? That's mm -hmm. according to some TikTokers or whoever. There's a whole world happening behind all of that that is so beyond your imagination. Diddy has made a habit of getting into trouble. Every day there's a new rumor and a new lawsuit against the man. Domestic violence, <laughs> you name it. That guy has been accused of every crime under the sun. Yet somehow, he never seemed to face any consequences for his actions. Well, until now anyway. Things seem to be changing out there in Hollywood, and the industry no longer seems to want to protect its alleged predators as it once did. What first seemed like the usual allegations of and trafficking against Diddy quickly turned into a global controversy. Homeland Security had no choice but to intervene and finally question Diddy about the allegations. On March 25th, the security forces simultaneously raided the rappers' homes in Los Angeles and Miami, hoping to get their hands on him. But Diddy was nowhere to be seen. However, the security team confiscated some of Diddy's precious belongings, as well as his electronic devices. I'm outside Diddy's $40 million Holmby Hills pad. It's quiet now, but yesterday, media, SWAT vehicles, dozens of armed officials and investigators descended on the property, seizing boxes of evidence. These raids came as a reminder for everyone in the industry that the tides might finally be turning against Diddy. This means more and more victims now have the courage to speak up against the horrible experiences they had while working with Diddy. Most of these people were young artists who were just starting out and saw Diddy as their mentor and senior. Aubrey is one such victim who believed that Diddy would help her grow into a superstar. You know, I have such a love-hate with it all because I don't think I would have been able to be so successful in so many other areas had I not been trained under Diddy. But things weren't as simple as she had initially expected. After all, why would a star like Diddy give so much attention and affection to an artist just starting out? It turns out he had other motives in mind and he made sure that the newcomers were entirely dependent on him. He was the hardest person that you can work for, and it was And not the work part of it, but the other stuff. Mind games, like just all the girls were so divided and the men and the people running it were the, had their hands in it. Diddy would first pretend to be a caring and attentive senior and mentor to these young artists. And once they started to trust him, he would bring them down. Audrey recalls how Diddy would constantly make uncalled for remarks regarding her body and tell her that she wasn't beautiful anymore. Diddy would be like, you're not hot anymore. Like what happened? You don't have anything like you don't have any curves. You're looking like just you're not looking like I can't get people to think that you're my good looking person. This was Diddy's way of bringing down Aubrey's confidence, and making her rely on him for her self-worth. All this was so traumatic for her that it took her a really long time to see herself as worthy of love and respect. Some fans think that the only reason Diddy went out of his way to hurt Aubrey was because she wouldn't reciprocate his attention. One person said, Why do I have a feeling that the real, underlying reason Diddy is throwing his weight around with this wounded ego tantrum is because he made advances to Aubrey and she turned him down. Others are also speculating that the entire reason Aubrey's group failed was because Diddy wanted to take advantage of all the girls in the group, but Aubrey stood up to him. Aubrey was the face of the group, like it or not, and she was getting money from brands and movies, and Diddy wasn't getting any of it, and he wanted to have a relationship with all of them. 
and Aubrey was the only one that stood up to him. So he fired her, and then the group suffered. Well, things have started to turn around now, and Aubrey seems to be pretty happy about Karma finally catching up to Diddy. After the news of the raids on Diddy's residences broke, Aubrey took to Instagram to share her feelings, and she was joyous, to say the least. What you sow, you shall I pray this emboldens all of us victims to finally speak on what we've endured. As the media claimed that Diddy had flown privately to Bermuda after the raids in order to avoid arrest, Aubrey poked fun at the fact that he decided to run away in order to save himself. You know it's bad when you sprint into Bermuda. I don't even know the local animal there. Diddy seemed to have infuriated Aubrey after he announced his intention to bring back Making the Band, the show that produced Danny Kane. O'Day accused Diddy of breaking up the group, lying to them, and taking their money. Just a few years after the group was formed, Diddy fired Aubrey after telling her that she needed to be humble. Your attitude is going to have you in a dark and lonely place. What you need to do at the end of the day is humble yourself. O'Day said that Diddy never gave a damn about the group's popularity or well-being, and saying that he had misled them about their contracts, embezzled the majority of their pay, and had them work long hours without enough pay or assistance. She claimed that Diddy should apologize to them before relaunching the program, since he treated them like products and pimps. Aubrey had worked closely with Diddy in the past, when he formed the girl group Danity Kane and acted as their producer and mentor. So it's not a surprise that Aubrey allegedly has her fair share of bad experiences with the music mogul. This isn't the first time that Aubrey has spoken up against the rapper. In fact, she was pretty vocal at the time the Cassie controversy first broke. Cassie was Diddy's ex-girlfriend who accused him of <laughs> At that time, Cassie wrote, I stay trying to tell y'all. She also supported Cassie in one of her interviews, where she said Cassie was brave for standing up against someone as powerful and influential as Diddy. It isn't easy to take on one of the most powerful people in this industry and be honest about your experience with them. I know what her heart is feeling right now, because I have done so as well. May her voice bring all the others to the table, so we can start having more transparent conversations about what is actually happening behind the scenes. Both Aubrey and Diddy have always pointed fingers at each other in interviews and online. Diddy recalled his experience of working with Aubrey during the Danity Kane times and called her a problem child. While she wasn't having it and immediately responded, my relationship with Puff is a difficult one for me. We constantly b heads and I constantly feel the need to b heads. But at the end of it, I realized this is the job that I chose and this is my dream and nobody's going to take that away from me. Was she insinuating that Diddy could hurt her career if she ended up angering him? Maybe. After all, she wasn't afraid to call him out for stealing her earnings either. She said, old boy said it first. It gets dark and lonely. Some people stand on business and some use the money they robbed from decades of their artist's pockets to flee the country. I know I'm not on a PJ having the pilot hitting U-turns left and right, trying to find a landing spot with a non-extradition treaty. I said what I said. You can say a lot of things about me, but I have always kept it 100 for decades. It's no surprise that the recent raids at Diddy's house have left Aubrey happy and content, but Diddy feels the opposite. He seems to be rather upset about them. While speaking about the raids, his attorney spoke to the media and said, Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. He said that all these cases and allegations against his client Diddy were nothing more than a witch hunt. This unprecedented ambush, paired with an advanced, coordinated media presence, leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs, and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. All these allegations started after Diddy's ex-girlfriend Cassandra Ventura came forward with the abuse she had faced at the hands of the rapper. She took him to court, and the testimony was bone-chilling, to say the least. In the lawsuit, Cassie said, After years in silence and darkness, I am finally ready to tell my story and speak up on behalf of myself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. 
Just like Aubrey, Cassie was a young, aspiring artist who considered Diddy her mentor and guide. But Diddy wanted more than this, and he quickly forced her into a suffocating relationship. Diddy wanted complete control over her social and private life, and he was ready to achieve that through whatever means possible. Not surprisingly, everyone around him turned a blind eye to the that he was inflicting on the poor girl. She explained this in the lawsuit as well. Beatings were witnessed by Mr. Combs' staff and employees, but no one dared to speak up against their frightening and ferocious boss. Everyone around Cassie pretended not to notice the extent of the that Diddy was inflicting on the poor girl. Every time she hid, Mr. Combs' vast network of corporations and affiliated entities found her, and those who worked for Mr. Combs' companies implored her to return to him. The filing stated, Many went as far to explicitly state that her failure to return to Mr. Combs would hinder her success in the entertainment industry. But as Cassie ended up settling with Diddy outside of court, Diddy's legal team tried to pretend that this settlement was not an admission of guilt. Just to be clear, a decision to settle a lawsuit, especially in 2023, is no way an admission of wrongdoing. Mr. Combs' decision to settle the lawsuit does not in any way undermine his flat-out denial of the claim. Claims. He is happy they got to a mutual settlement and wishes Miss Ventura the best. People think that him shutting down the lawsuit immediately must mean that the evidence against him was undeniable. Some even think that the recent raids at his homes might be related to this as well. Diddy closed Cassie's civil lawsuit in less than 24 hours, which meant the evidence stacked up against him, according to his legal team, and the companies he held stake in was truly insane, and now the feds want to see it. The recent raids have finally given Aubrey the courage to reveal the shocking things Diddy put her through at the start of her career, including treating her as a pimp and making unwanted advances at her. Rumors have it that Diddy ruins the careers of any young women who refuse to bow down to him, just like Aubrey. That's it from our side today, folks. We'll be back with more amazing videos. Until then, take care and goodbye.